Dames en heren, welkom allemaal. Welkom bij alweer de zesde editie van de Business Lunch Talk. Vandaag hier met Thijs. Thijs, yes. Yes, we doen, oh, sorry, we do everything, thank you, in English today. Do people have a problem with that? No, a few, okay, sorry, then you have to, no, no, you can stay. We do everything in English today. Um, for the people that are coming in, just grab some food. If the food is not already stolen, but you can also sit here in the front. I understand that people want to sit in the back. I always did it during my own study. You probably as well. A lot, but you can come. For the people, please join us in front. This is the sixth edition. Um, have everybody been to a former edition? Who is here for the first time? Business Lunch Talk, first time? Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's quite a lot. Um, to get a perspective of what we're going to do today, Business Lunch Talk, it's all in the name. We're going to hear an inspiring talk today from Thijs, and he's going to inspire you guys on how you can start a business on your own, and hopefully, which is with a lot of ups and downs, of course, but he wants to inspire you guys and let you know that also during your study that you can start. Important to know is, uh, Thijs is going to tell everything about it, but there are a lot of support organizations, so I want to see if there are entrepreneurs, study entrepreneurs are in the business here in the room, are there a few? Yeah. Yes, a little bit shy. What are you doing? Marketing. 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 Sorry? Okay, the marketing and you do are in? You're in? I have no idea what you said, but good luck. <laughs> no. Student protection? Student protection, did you say that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Stabbing protection. Oh, Whoa. so it's like uh, karate-ish. No? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Step free clothes. Because everybody wow. gets stabbed here a lot. Okay, I understand. If there's anybody else in the room who wants to start a business, already has a business idea, it's good to know that there are a lot of support organizations out there. One of them is the host, of course, of this BLT. It's uh, founded in Friesland. They are sitting over there. They're Little eating. applause. Yes, yes. Come on, hey, yeah, hey, okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> They're now stealing all the food because they think you have everything, so now they are stealing all the food. Um, founded in Friesland, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but they do a lot of activities like this, but also for people that they want to grow their idea, get into the community, get some advice, maybe get some investors on board. Founded is the go-to place to go to. There's Jorndt, Jorndt the Boer. Hey, 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 Jorndt. Yes, today we call him Jorndt the farmer, of course. And if you want to go and continue on your business idea, please go to Jorndt as well. He can help you out and get you in contact with people. And there is also one inside of the business, uh, inside of the business, inside of the building, and it's called Center for Entrepreneurship. Center for Entrepreneurship, it's a place now at the other side, at Stenden. It's a co-worker place or flex desk. There's always somebody available to ask questions during the day. There's this community and everything is set for growth. So, um, Center for Entrepreneurship, I see your receipt was Bauke. Yes, yes, they're in the corner. You can also go to Bauke afterwards if you have questions or you want to have a desk available. I believe there are like 150 now, Bauke, 150 student entrepreneurs. Yes, so a lot of growth today. Found it, and we have Center of Entrepreneurship. So go to them, ask them all the questions you have, use their spaces, go to their activities if you want to continue with your business. So far, so good. Today, of course, we have Thijs. Thijs started out in uh, like 2014, yes. and uh, together with some of his uh, co-founders, uh, started United Wardrobe. Grew quite fast in five years, four million users. Yeah. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. Who used United Wardrobe back in the days? A little bit shy, but can you raise it a little bit more? Okay, so that's around, we say 20, 30%. We, we uplift it. And who uses Vinted right now? Vinted. Even more. Second-hand clothes. Nice. Nice. He says nice because he's now <laughs> shareholder of Vinted, so <laughs> if you use it more, he can pay family. more. Uh, Thijs is going to tell you the story about the highs, the lows, how he started, how he get some funding, and eventually how he exit the building. 
The building. <laughs> the building. Yeah. And at the end, there's a small gift for them as well. Oh, yeah. Um, currently, I'm writing a book. It's a Dutch book. I'm sorry for all the English speakers. In Dutch, is it, for hoeveel heb je het verkocht? That's the question I always get, which maybe if you read the book, you will know. Um, but the book is about the whole thing that I'm going to uh, tell you, but then in six hours, and I'm now going to do it in 30 minutes. So if you want to go in depth, you can go to my website. It's thijsverhul.com. If you click on my book, you can drop your email, and if the book launches, you get a free ebook. Just You don't have to pay on bol.com. It will be eight euro. But for everybody who follows me on Instagram and on LinkedIn, I will give a free PDF ebook. So um, afterwards, I think uh, Marije also has the link. She can share it on Instagram or whatever. Yes. Um, can I already start? No. No? Okay. Almost. I will wait. <laughs> there was the last thing. No, um, you can start <laughs> in a few minutes. I yeah. think also Marije is going to send all the emails to you guys so you can uh, read the book. He was inspired uh, himself by another author who made hives. Hives is more like my generation. I don't know if people know Hives or used Hives. So um, he got inspired and eventually built United Road Rope, sold it. So maybe you guys get inspired as well. We have around a half an hour. Uh, afterwards, there's, of course, room for questions. So save the questions for afterwards. And we're all done here around 12.45. Yes. OK, dames and heren, ladies and gentlemen, give a big applause. Thanks for you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, guys, yeah, I already know who used United Wardrobe and who used Vinted now. Um, when we sold United Wardrobe, we had like 4 million people using it. It is a crazy roller coaster story. I have half an hour and I'm going to try to explain how we get there from ID to eventually exit. Um, when I was a student, I was 18 years old, I finished my VWO. Uh, I went to university to study law in Utrecht because everybody said, yeah, if you study law, then you can become a lawyer and make money. So I went there, I had the introduction days, and um, then I had to get my books. They were like the law books. And I was like, oh shit, they're super thick, these books, what the fuck? And I went to my first work college, it's like work group uh, college, I don't know the English word now. But um, I was sitting there and everybody was like, yeah, we're reading these books. And this teacher was like, hey, you have to read these books for half an hour. And I was like reading these books and I was like, this is not <laughs> how my future is going to look like. So I went to her and I said, I'm going to quit and uh, I'm going home. So that's what I did. After two weeks, I stopped uh, with uh, law. And then uh, my father, he has a, a window cleaning company, super small company. He cleans windows in the area of The Hague. So I went there and I started cleaning windows for two months and I was like, this is also not how my future is going to look like. So one of my friends said, Thijs, you're 18. Um, you have to become a ski teacher in Austria. So I was like, oh, sounds fun. So I went to uh, Austria, I got my Anwarter, then you can teach people how to ski. And for six months, I was in Kirchberg, together with the people from Kirchberg in Tirol. Do you guys still know that? It was like, oh, oh, Tirol. It, it was like, oh, oh, Gerso, but then in Tirol with the people from oh, oh, Gerso. It was really funny. And for after like a couple of months, I also realized, I don't think I want to be a ski teacher all the time. Um, so then I was uh, back in the Netherlands, and one of my friends was studying in Wageningen. And there you have a study called Business and Consumption Studies. It's basically business together with psychology. So I went there. Everything seems fine. I uh, applied myself to the university, and I started there. And um, I think in one of the uh, uh, classes that I had, I met uh, Jules Berde. And he was like, hey. The Netherlands needs uh, a new Facebook or a new Pinterest. And together with Shul, uh, we had this little business club of people who were interested in startups. So we went on Thursday drinking beers, talking about startups. And all of a sudden, uh, Shul uh, sent me a text uh, message. It was in 2013. And he was like, hey, Thijs, I have a great idea. Uh, should we grab a coffee uh, this uh, Friday? And that Thursday, I had a student party. Then I was super hangover on Friday, and I was sitting there in the sun with Shul. And he said, Thijs, I have three sisters. They have way too much clothes. They go to Marktplatz. They get scammed. Old men contact them for nude pictures. They are in Facebook groups. Um, they go to the Eihalle. Um, vintage is everywhere. But there's no central place where you can buy and sell just like ticket swap. And I was like, Shul, man, this is the stupidest idea I ever heard. Why would anybody would be interested in a marketplace for clothes? You have Marktplatz, you have Facebook. 
So then for the coming six weeks, Shul tried to convince me of his ID. So he went on calling me, Thijs, we have to do this together. Come on, man, come on, man. And later on, he, wa he explained to me why he wanted to work with me, because I was always the hustler type. When we had um, a werkgroepje, like a working group together with students, I was always the one who did all the enquêtes and did all the research, and then Shul had the plan. So he had the plan for United Wardrobe, which was then called One Wardrobe, and I was the one that had to execute it, but by then I didn't know that. So it was like explaining me, and after like, I think three months, I went so crazy, and I was like, Shul, okay, fuck it. If you believe in this, uh, we're gonna find a designer who's gonna make the first design, because that's where it all starts. If you have an ID, you need a design. That's like the first thing in IT, you need to know how the product is gonna look like. Because if you don't know how the product is going to look like, the programmers can develop it. So that's what we did. We went to university, we put on a beamer, we found a designer in Arnhem, and then we just said, okay, we want this uh, uh, bottom there, and the pictures of the clothes needs to be there, and if this thing pops up, then you can create your own account. And so I think in 14 days, we built the first design for United Wardrobe, and it was super ugly because we launched only with the website. But we were super hyped and proud of that we had a design and we already thought like, okay, uh, if we're gonna launch it, uh, we're gonna become rich. Because I really thought that if you launch a website and you put it online, then the internet will just make it work. You know, it's like always when I was in the office, my father said like, what do you do all day? Because there is already a website. Uh, are you, do you read the paper? And I was like, yeah, just reading the paper and doing nothing. But it's of course not true. So. We had this designer who designed the first version, and if this is designed, what do you need then in your team? Come on. A hacker, yes. You need a developer, somebody who can build the product, and those are just like bitcoins. They are the hardest things to find. Like uh, six years ago, uh, bitcoin was like 100 euro, now it's almost uh, 50,000 euros. It's because everybody wants it. And right now, in this society, everybody wants developers. So if you want to make money a secure way, you have to go tomorrow on YouTube and teach yourself how to program. But that's another story. So we found a developer. His name was Joop. Together we went to the Kamer van Koophandel, the Chamber of Commerce, and we said, okay, let's create a VOF and let's build United Wardrobe. So for day in and day out, we started creating United Wardrobe, and on the 15th of January 2014, we launched. We launched really big in Wageningen. Uh, the, the university wrote a piece about us. Um, we had a local newspaper write about us, and we just created some buzz. And in this stage of launching a startup, especially a startup with huge market traction like United Wardrobe, like basically everybody has clothes, so everybody could use United Wardrobe, we, you just have to talk to everybody, explain it to everybody, and don't be afraid that your ID is getting stolen because it will only get stolen if it really works. And first of all, you have to make it work. So that's what we did. We launched United Wardrobe, and we knew nothing about online marketing. We knew nothing about scaling a marketplace because right on the first day, we were for 10 minutes live, and then I got a message like, hey, I think United Wardrobe is down. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? And then Thijs Slijkhuis, who developed for us, he wasn't yet uh, one of our founders. Um, he was like, oh, I have to fix it. And then it got fixed, it got online again. And then the first weeks after, I really was in this hype of like, okay, we created this website, it's gonna be big. And then it was like this, like everybody went on it and then pfft, everybody was away. And then for the coming two months, like there was nobody. So me and Shul were like, okay, what do we have to do to make United Wardrobe big? And we really, didn't know shit about marketing. We started flyering, we started uh, advertising with the Wageningen University. Nothing really worked and we were really on this point and we're like, okay, it was a cool idea, but let's go and do our study again. And then one of my friends told me there was a vintage marketplace in Groningen. It was a Facebook group with 15,000 mostly female uh, girls, <laughs> 
female girls. <laughs> anyway, um, and they were exchanging clothing on this Facebook group. So it was like a mini United wardrobe. So we were like, oh shit, we have to have this. So we went in this group and we pr pretended that we were selling Dr. Martens. And then uh, all of a sudden um, uh, we saw who was the administrator of this group. And I just sent her a message like, hey, I created this United wardrobe and I really want to buy this group. And she was like, I'm getting totally crazy of this group. Everybody is uh, sending me uh, messages and people get scammed. You can have the group for, for a couple hundred euros. And then we were, okay. And that was our first point of growth. That was the most important thing. We found a place, 15,000 users, that we had to migrate to United Wardrobe. But if we posted a message in the group like, hey, uh, come to United Wardrobe, we bought the group, then everybody would say like, no, fuck no, I'm not going to do that. So what we did is all the clothes that came in on uh, United Wardrobe and on the Vintage Marketplace, we shared that in the group all the time, manually, because Facebook is blocking algorithms that do that uh, automatically. So when there were new Dr. Martens, I shared it in the uh, uh, Vintage uh, Marketplace, and then people clicked on it, went to United Wardrobe, created an account, uploaded their closet, and then the Marketplace was slowly growing. So we had a growth model going on, but we needed more growth, 15,000 girls and a bit boys, is not enough. We had to ha make United Wardrobe even bigger. So then we found out Facebook marketing. And Facebook marketing nowadays is also Instagram marketing. So what you can do is go to business.facebook.com and just for one euro, you can create your own Facebook ads. And that's what we did. We created ads with Nike Air Max because Nike Air Max, we saw that those were the products with the most views, the most interaction. So we, we grabbed the nicest Nike Air Max or Dr. Martens also. We put them in Facebook ads and people went clicking on it, registering and putting their stuff on United Wardrobe. So we had more supply, there were more things to find on United Wardrobe. And we started slowly growing. And, and back in the days for like only two cents, we could get a click. Like nowadays, if you have a click on Facebook, on the platform for a euro, it's already cheap. But back in the days, it was two cents. So everybody who's having a startup right now, you have to find out these cheap growth models. Because if you know these cheap growth models, and you can profit from them, it's only for a couple of months or a couple of years, you can become your industry leader in the thing that you do. So we got that going on for us. And already, me and Shul and Joop, we were having fights in every startup, in every work group. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, you, you have these fights because you, you always say, yeah, we do a lot and you do not and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden there was a, a bomb that bursted and we were like, okay, we cannot go further with you, uh, me and Shul. And it was around that time that we had our first big press uh, launch in uh, the Volkskrant. We had a whole newspaper article about United Wardrobe. So there were uh, BMW 5 classes, S classes, Range Rovers in front of our office of investors who want to invest in us. We never had any idea what really an investment was. We were like, yeah, we're going to give away a little part of the business and then we get money. And that's the only thing that we knew. So we were getting a lot of attention and traction in the Dutch market. The, the, the founder team was going to burst. And around that time is what we decided, okay, you um, you, you're going out of the company, you still have uh, a little part of the shares. Thijs Slijkhuis, who was her, our CTO, our main developer, the one who built United Wardrobe together with Joop, he was getting the same shares as we had. We could have been greedy at the time if we said, okay, Thijs Slijkhuis, you get 5% and it's a lot, of, a lot of money on this valuation. But then we would never scale because you need the hippie, the hacker and the hustler. You need somebody who has the vision. That was my co-founder, Shul. He was like, oh yeah, my, my, my sisters are selling these clothes. You need somebody who good, puts action on it, who goes hustling, who get new people, who get the press. That was always me. I was always doing the marketing and getting new deals with Monica Geuze, Fred van Leer, Enzo Knoll. They all sold their clothes through United Wardrobe because I was just calling them all the time and stalking them and hey, we're gonna sell your clothes and blah, blah, blah. And eventually you have to make a deal with them. But I was doing that, and then Thijs Slijkhuis was steadily building the product. So then Joop went out of the picture. He still got bought out, and yeah, it was a shame. We still talk to uh, this guy, and uh, this Saturday we have a party, and he's still there, and we're cool now, but around that time, it was fucked up. 
always stay cool in these kinds of situations. Uh, personally, I had some, yeah, some things that I'm not proud of. You know, you're angry, you have a startup, you want to grow, and then some things are not going well. But then we had the company with Thijs Slijkhuis, with me, and with Shul. We got our first investment, 250,000 euros, and then we could really grow. We could build an IT department, we could build a customer support, we could build a marketing department and we could get our first normal office um, because we were always renting out anti-squat offices, anti-kraak. So if for 150 euros a month, you can al already rent something. And I would highly recommend to, if you have a startup, get an office so you can come together. So you really have a place that's your new home because you have to work 24 seven if you want to make it a success. So we had our office, we had the first money, we started to grow and grow in the Netherlands. And then um, you really go from a startup to a scale up. So from just a few students who are just eating pizza, drinking Red Bull, hanging out, drinking beers, to a professional company with people and managers. And around that, that time, we had around 15 employees already. So we are g growing. And everybody in the Netherlands knew us because we were working with Monika Geuze. And every time Monika Geuze puts her items online, there were 20,000 girls in the same second who went to United Wardrobe and tried to get her clothes. Has anybody ever bought something from an influencer on United Wardrobe? Yeah? Yeah, it, it was always terror because there was only one pair of Dr. Martens and there were like 200 girls that wanted to pay at the same time. And we had to build a system that only can one girl or boy get those shoes. And it was like in milliseconds they had to choose because there were 200 people there were pressing the ideal button. That's also an all other story. So we had our whole product going on. We knew how to grow. We used influencer marketing. We used Facebook marketing. And a marketplace is always built up of liquidity. So you have the buyers and the sellers. So it's same as if you go on Marktplatz and, for example, you want to buy a new car of, uh, for example, a Peugeot and you only want to spend 2,000 euro and there is no Peugeot, you go to Autoscout. So, but if there are 20 Peugeots, you stay on Marktplatz. So a marketplace, building a marketplace, is all about liquidity. If we had around 1,000 Dr. Martens, we could sell uh, 30 to 40 Dr. Martens every day because we just know there are so many people looking for these products. So we started scaling up the business, and this, this is the fun part, because then we went on finding a new investment round. So what you do is you have a whole roadshow for venture capital world, and you have like basically you have investors who are business angels. So currently, me, I'm a business angel, so if a startup comes and has a good idea and everything is nice, then I can say, okay, I will invest. So that's, these are the business angels, but the bigger rounds, also the smaller rounds, they are, uh, done by venture capital firms. And basically, venture capital firms are like rich people. They're super lazy. They put all the money in a fund, and they have these managers on the fund. And their managers, they're going searching for investments and do the investments. So it's not really their money, but the managers who are managing the fund for the venture capital world. So all the big investments that you see in the media are done by venture capital. Only the Picnic investment, like Bill Gates just funded Picnic for 600 million, and Bill Gates is also doing that with an investment vehicle. But anyway, we were doing the roadshow. We went to Paris, we went to Berlin, we went to Copenhagen, we went to London, we went to San Francisco, telling the story, getting the feces, super excited. And this is super hard for an entrepreneur because if you are pitching your ID, it's like United Wardrobe was my little baby every time I get a one-star review in the App Store, I cried, you know, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, I bought these shoes and nobody shipped them to me and United Wardrobe is a scam. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then literally sometimes I laid awake at night scrolling through these one-star reviews. And I was like, no. So every, if, if your startup is getting big, everybody has an opinion about it and you're also going to get a lot of negativity out of it. You have to try to turn it on to positivity, because that is the hardest part uh, of the whole negativity thing. I personally had a rough time with that when people were saying that. But anyway, you, you go pitching to all these VC firms and they are going to crack you down. They're going to say, oh, there's already Marktplatz, there's already Vinted, uh, we used your product and it's shit. Uh, do you really think we're going to put money in you? And then they're going to test you and you have to say, yeah, of course, uh, because we know this and that. And if we have 100,000 euro, we're going to give it to influencers, we're going to give it to Facebook, we're going to give it on Marktplatz, Edmarkt, and that's how we're going to grow. 
And these venture capital firms, they want to see people who are stuffing their shoes and they're going to give you a lot of money, so you have to use it wisely. And we are super young. We as students are always super young. So if there are experienced entrepreneurs, for example, if I now created my own new startup, I get some people with it, especially Shul and Thijs from the old startup, everybody knows, okay, these guys, they built United Wardrobe, they get funding, they exit it on Vinted, they have also their own money. So then it's way easier to get money. So it's also super unfair. But yeah, that's, that's just how the investment wor world works. But of course you can have rich family or just somebody who likes your product. That's always the look kind of part. But anyway, so we did the whole roadshow and eventually we found uh, an investment uh, uh, firm from Amsterdam called Peak Capital. And Peak Capital is an investment firm like the people from Hives, the people from Booking.com, the people from Vakantieveilingen.nl. They all put money in Peak Capital. And there you have uh, Johan and Stefan. Um, and Johan is really the hustler guy, getting talking to all the startups. And Stefan is uh, specialized in mergers and acquisitions. So it's buying, building companies and selling and merging. And uh, we made a deal and we, had, we, we got a 1 million euros from them to grow in France because that was our pl plan. We, we used a lot of influencer marketing in France and we really thought like, okay, in the Netherlands, um, it is uh, around 15 euro for a customer. So for every United Wardrobe user, on a yearly basis, we got like 15 euros. And it was like around a euro to get a new registration because everybody knew it in uh, the Netherlands. Every day, if we did no marketing, there were 3,000 new people registering to the platform. But then in France, there was already Vinted, yes. So we really thought like, okay, we're just gonna launch United Wardrobe um, with a business model of 10% because we always took 10% of uh, the seller side. And then it's gonna work. <laughs> But it's the same, like, for example, if I now say, okay, I launch um, Tiki Plus, it's uh, the same as Tiki, but we're going to get 10%. <laughs> Nobody's going to use it. And you can work with Monika Geuze, and Monika Geuze can say, oh, yeah, use Tiki Plus. And then maybe 10,000 of her followers will go and download Tiki Plus, and they will use it for a couple of days, and then they will just use Tiki. But we were super stubborn, and we really thought, hey, we built a better product, and we're going fight with Vinted. And this, uh, this whole fight ended up super, super bloody because we s ended up spending a shitload of money of our investors. After this a million, they even gave us another 1.5 million. So in total, we got 2.5 million from them. And then we were like, ooh, guys, yeah, we spent a lot of money, but uh, we're not really growing. And uh, yeah, what should we do? <laughs> yeah, and then they're going to kill you, of course, because they spent, not literally kill you, but uh, in a meeting room, kill you with arguments, um, because they spent a lot of money on you and they have a lot of trust in the company and we hired 55 people in total. So we had a team of 55 people and then we came at a point like, okay, France is just not working. Vinted is growing like shit and Vinted raised 128 million. So we only had 2.5 million. That's a shitload of money, but Vinted just raised 128 million. So then we were like, okay, <laughs> what should we do? And then our investors were like, okay, guys, this can't go on right now. You still, we still were uh, making some profits and we still were growing, but we're not, we were not growing like more than 100% year on year growth. And all the investment firms just want to see you reach 100% growth year on year. And we were not on that point. So then they just told us and we also realized ourselves we have to lay off people, aka ontslaan in Dutch. And yeah, that was one of the hardest periods of my life because you build this whole United Wardrobe family, you have 55 people all working for one goal from the developers to the customer support to the marketing team. And then all of a sudden we were spending around 150,000 euros a month on salaries. And then it, if we kept on doing that for another six months, we go bankrupt. So eventually what we had to do is one of the hardest days in my life. We had one week and literally 20 people, we had to tell them, okay, your contract is not uh, going to get uh, prolonged or yeah, we cannot just pay your salary anymore. And that's just total fucked up. It was like four months working to that point that we really not could go on. And as an entrepreneur and in the whole United Wardrobe story, you're always super thrilled and excited and then you all, all of a sudden have to deal with such 
a fucked up thing because you have to tell 20 people that they have to go and find another job. And they are at a place where they love people. We even had like relationships started and it was a total mess. But eventually, if you are an entrepreneur, you just sometimes have to cut through the bullshit to buy through the rotten apple or <laughs> and then you have to go on again. So after that process, we ended up with a team of 30 people who were luckily still motivated and we kept on trying and trying again. And around that time, also Vinted went on knock knock. Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> can we buy you? <laughs> and we're like, uh, okay, uh, no, only for the right price. And then, of course, if a startup get bought, so you, you open your newspaper and you see, oh, uh, United Wardrobe is bought by Vinted. And when I was young, I was really like, okay, it's like the same on Marktplatz. You call somebody like, hey, uh, what do you want for this startup? And then, oh, we want this and that, and then you have a price. But um, if a startup gets sold or the a business got sold, you have like a, a process. For us, it took one and a half year and all investment bankers, they go sit down and they go t talk with the other lawyers and the investment bankers and you just continue your work and it's super boring. And eventually there's a deal or no deal. But around that same time, there was something else going on. It was uh, the beginning of 2020. Can you still know what, what happened there? Yeah? The corona, yeah. So it was 2020. There was only one signature I had to put on paper um, to sell off United Wardrobe and become financial independent for the rest of my life. And then uh, all of a sudden, Italy had corona. Then there was the first case in the Netherlands. Then France totally shut down. All the shipping points were closed. And we're like, what the fuck? What the fuck is happening? But yeah, we're still gonna sell it, so. And then on a Saturday, uh, Vincent was like, mm, we had to have a crisis call. And then they just said, uh, guys, we have to uh, pause it a bit. <laughs> and they were like, oh shit. <laughs> we worked for this deal so long and then they're gonna pause it. But eventually what happened afterwards, everybody went on United Wardrobe because they couldn't go to the H&M and the Zara because all the shops were closed. They couldn't go to the uh, secondhand stores because they were closed. So and everybody was at home, bored as fuck. So what they did is we sell, sold clothes. So we grew immensely in that period. And we went even two times, three times bigger than we were. And eventually in six months, all from home, we built out a super slick company who was shit as profitable. And at that point, Vinted came knocking on again. And I don't know how much time I still have. What's the time? Three minutes? Oh, three minutes. Oh, I still have a lot of time. I hope you have a lot of questions. So around that time, we, we really came to a conclusion that like Vinted's strategy is to become the number one fashion marketplace in the world. And that was also our strategy. They want to make secondhand fashion the norm. We want to make secondhand fashion the norm. And they had a super cool team. So eventually we decided to join forces and become even bigger right now. And the whole United Wardrobe team, still not the whole team, but a big part of the United Wardrobe team still works for Vinted now on their Canadian expansion. So they use the United Wardrobe product. It's all gone from the Dutch market, but they use this product with the Vinted label in Canada. So my little child is still doing her thing somewhere. Um, and eventually, personally for myself, I decided to, uh, to quit this whole journey and to become a new, uh, found a new startup again, write a book about uh, the whole uh, show uh, that United Wardrobe was and do a lot of these presentations because I always love to talk to students. And uh, my co-founders, Shul and Thijs, they still work for Vinted. Uh, Thijs is still uh, one of the developers. Shul is uh, a product lead. They also helped me writing uh, the book. And uh, I hope that I will find my new United Wardrobe somewhere, somehow, and just gonna build another company again with all the knowledge that I now know. And on this whole journey, I hope to inspire people a bit. So I wrote a whole book about the story if you wanna read it. Um, if you go to my website and click on my book, so it's thijsverhul.com, click on my book. If you drop your email there, the ebook is going to be 8 euros, but if you drop your email now, it's going to be free for you. So when the book launches, I hope in 1.5 months, so it's uh, the half of November, then uh, you're going to get the free book in your email and then you can read it or not, <laughs> or whatever you like. So um, yeah, thanks for being here. And um, does anybody have some questions? Let's uh, first give an applause for Thijs. Oh, yeah.
thanks. <laughs> Kabam. Uh, Thijs, before we start with the uh, questions, uh, we always say uh, if people want to start a business that they need to be passionate about what they do. Yeah. You had a second-hand uh, marketplace, so yeah. you needed to have something with second hands or not at all. Yeah. What, if I was passionate about second-hand clothing, yes, when you to be honest, I told Shul, I'm not a fashion man, how can I build a fashion company? Uh, this is nothing for me. But eventually I went super passionate, like still these Nikes, they're new, 110 euros. I got them the day before yesterday for 30 euros. So I saved still 80 euros. And uh, this pants comes from United Water. Everything I wear is vintage, oh, vintage, vintage now, of course, not United Water <laughs> anymore. But yeah, uh, building this product and seeing how easy it is to buy and sell clothes and to not just go to a store and buy new clothes and do it the easy way, but also the cheap way, it's just like how the future is going to work. Everybody is going to, in the future, use second-hand clothes. Always there's going to be some new clothes, but I, I personally believe that around 40 to 50% of all the wardrobes can be second-hand. Nice. There's enough Four clothes things. on the world to, uh, for 30 times the population. So, And you think with United Wardrobe, you really solved that problem? We so really... Uh, no, when we started United Wardrobe, it was there, there was this dusty image. Oh, second-hand clothes, it was dirty, I'm not going to use it. Uh, especially the males were like, nah, it's not for me. Some girls were doing it, the vintage people were doing it. But then we made it accessible to everybody in the Netherlands. Eventually, four million people used it. And nobody was like, hmm, it's dirty. You know, you throw it in laundry, and if you ship it, you have washed it, of course. And uh, for the students that are here, one major lesson you learned? There were a lot, of course, but one is the, like, the number one. The number one is find people who are complementary to you. So if you are a hustler, you have to find a hacker and a hippie. If you are a visionary and you see this whole roadmap in front of you and you already see thousands of customers, you have to find somebody who's going to execute it and eventually also somebody who's going to build it. And if you are a bit interested in math or business uh, shizzle and Excel sheets, <laughs> Go to YouTube, go to Stack Overflow, teach yourself how to develop. I, maybe you want to be a, um, a blockchain engineer, you know? This is one of the hottest industries right now. Everybody's talking about crypto. Go to the Cardano Summit and teach yourself how to develop something on their platform. And don't go and teach yourself the old H HTML, CSS stuff, but go to a new kind of business and teach yourself something so that you can also develop your own startup because that is where the most value is. If you can do shit yourself, then you don't have to hire expensive developers. Um, and if you are a developer, find your marketing guy. But how did you, that one last from me, then it's all for you guys. Um, finding a team is hard. There yeah. are uh, probably some help with uh, found it. I found it, uh, yeah, one second. Within uh, Founded and Friesland can probably help or set up yeah. uh, things, but how did you guys do it on the more legal side, a short version? Did you have like an uh, old gentleman's agreement, like we're going to split it, or was it all in paper? Uh, no, we went to the notary uh, and uh, really signed off uh, shares, because if you want to make a startup big, uh, you have to make the pie bigger. From the start? Yeah, from the start, of course. Shul was like, okay, Thijs, uh, you're going to have 50% of the company. Let's do it. Because you can only start a company and only get successful like 90, 99% of the times if the founders have sh the same shares and are all with it in, within the same motivation. Because you, if you call me on a Sunday morning and you say, hey, Thijs, uh, United Warp is down and I'm just an employee, you go, why are you uh, calling me? Call me on Monday. But if you call somebody who has shares in this company, and if the, share, the, the company goes bankrupt, this pe person also goes bankrupt, he's like, okay, I'm gonna get my laptop and I'm gonna fix it, you know? And this is what we did with uh, Thijs Slijkhuis. Okay, yeah. so fix it right from the start. Yeah, from, yeah, now of course you start with a team. Everybody has the same amount of shares, and then you find a new person, and you all have to give a little bit shares to this person. But first start off with working three months together to see yeah. if it's a success. Don't go give him all your shares because Ty Slykos was already working for us for a year. Yeah. So, you know, we need to give this guy like a golden bracelet to keep him. Otherwise, he went on working in a lab somewhere. Um, yeah. Keeping the shares. There's a question over there. 
What's, can you please say your name and then the question? Hi, I'm Huma Soleri. I'm actually a lecturer at Senden, but I'm doing my second master's in corporate communications from Rotterdam uh, Erasmus University. Okay. So right now for my studies, purpose is now more important than profit and earth is seen as a stakeholder. Yeah. Does that apply to you as well? It does in the sense that you are really being sustainable with the clothing, within the clothing industry. Yeah. So can I ask your purpose related to Earth as a stakeholder for helping people and society not profiting, thing, profiting from people and society and Earth? How yeah. do you see yourself? Well, uh, profits and people have to work together because we live in a capitalistic society. If I'm just going to preach that I'm going to make the world better, nobody's going to give me money for the ID. So what we did, like the clothing industry is the second most dirtiest industry in the world. And if you buy your clothes secondhand, they don't have to be produced new. So every time when you purchase new clothes or you sell your own clothes, you are going to be a part of this whole industry. And that is what we did, and that's the impact that we make. Like every day in the Netherlands, Fint is selling 30,000 items. 30,000 items that don't have to be bought in a store, who can people just ship to themselves. And that's the impact that we make. But of course, we are in a capitalistic society, so you have to fund money, you have a need to good, a good revenue model, because if you are starting, you can, all, yeah, you can do it from a, a purpose side, and that's super important nowadays. I think no company is gonna invest in new oil startups, because it's super fucked up. Um, but if you have this new startup, you say, hey, I'm gonna make the world better, but we don't have a business model, it's also not gonna work, so it has to go together. One yep. more, please. Um, do you compare yourself to Richard Branson from Virgin Airlines? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, I, I read too. one of his books yeah. um, when I was very young. And of course, he has a really inspiring uh, story. But I think I, he also did a lot of bad things. Um, so no, I don't, I, I more compare myself to uh, the CEO of Vinted, Thomas Plantinghaus, also a Dutch guy who really built out, built out Vinted to uh, a, a company where now in 10 countries selling billions of clothes each year. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm personally more comparing myself to him than to Richard Branson. Well, I do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, do we have another question? Yes, of course. All the way in the center. Yes, uh, I'll go this way. Your name and the question, please. Um, my name is Marije Verhoef, and um, I study leisure and events. I'm in the third year now. Yeah. And we study a lot on project management and concept development. And there is a lot of theoretical frameworks that we have to figure out, but it always gives me this feeling as if we're going to a process very slow. Um, so I was wondering, in this whole pro process of, your, uh, of the development of your company, how much time did you actually spend on, like, diving into your computer and do research um, of the field that you're in, or was it just more a case of practical acting? Yeah, it's, uh, it's super uh, weird to say this in a school environment, because on a school you have to learn things that you can apply in the real world. But for me personally, United Wardrobe just had to grow. And with research, I won't let it grow. So uh, for me, I spent in the first years, 0% on research, just hustling, getting people on the platform, finding things to do, and then you teach yourself. And that's the most important thing in this society. If you can teach yourself how to program, how to build a company, to do whatever, you can use these skills for the rest of your life. You have this saying like, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day, but teach him how to fish and he will feed for the rest of his life. Yeah, that's super cliche, but yeah, of course, it's, if you don't know where to go, you go to a university and you learn about a lot of processes and you can apply that, of course. But if you are a startup and you started and you want to make money and you have to grow, yeah, then you just have to do a lot of shit and pivot. If this doesn't work, is that going to work? No, the next thing, the next thing, and then you find something and then you grow out of there and then you have to start over. So, yeah, no, it's not important. You just have to hustle and go there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have another question? Yes, in the front. I think we call it like validation. It's research, but also doing. Do the both if you don't know where to go, research, of course you, you need to do your research. But if you, we already knew 
we have to make this big, we have to go, and then you just have to give a lot of gas and find yeah, the right things. But not stick behind the screen, but go out and do it. Yeah, or on the screen, do it, yeah. But not in a safe environment, but go onto the market with it. Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest thing. As soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Liana and I have two questions. Um, I'm from the Friesland College, so MBO. I did HBO before, but right now I am like discussing with myself, should I do HBO or MBO? I'm doing Praktijkroute. I'm not sure what it is in English, but um, right now we are developing products to actually, and then I'm trying to decide if it's more important to get a higher education or just keep doing what I'm doing right now. If you're not sure what you want to do, um, the best thing for your future is, of course, to, to get a higher education. Because, but if you are already in a startup or working somewhere and you think like this is totally fine, then you have to go that to choose that path. It's just you have to make a decision in what you want. Okay, because uh, we also connected, founded here in Friesland already. Yeah. We had contact with Jorn, and it's actually quite funny. He was really nice to us, but um, we are allowed to go to Italy to make a product, and we were trying with him to get like a fund or something, because as you told us, like money is pretty important to start because you need to invest in a lot of things. But in the end, we lost contact, so how do you get the funds then if you're just a student with an ID and people support it? You have to first make, first make it work. Mm. So uh, just buy 10 of these products, mm. see if they sell, then buy 20 and then see if that works. And if you go to somebody with your data and say, hey, we bought this product, we sold it and we already do it for the 10th time and it's working, mm. they're gonna say, hey, you have a business model, here's money. But if you go to them and you say, yeah, we think that it's going to work and we ha need your money to test it out, nobody's going to give you money. So you just have to, yeah, and uh, if you really have zero, zero money mm -hmm. to, to buy these products, yeah, then maybe Fund in Friesland can help you. Mm -hmm. um, or you have to collect it through crowdfunding or uh, via friends or family. Mm -hmm. Just say, if all my friends donate 10 euro and then you get the first product, you can already prove that it works. Okay, so first you gotta have like the product and then you can get investors. It's, it's not as simple as that, but okay. you are way more behind uh, if you don't have any proof of uh, work on your product. Okay. So you need to have validation. Mm. If you can let people see like, hey, this is working for us, we are already doing business, then investors are going to give you money. Just as United Wardrobe, we were doing already 100,000 euro a month turnover, and then, of course, everybody wants to invest. And this is the point that you want to reach. Okay, thank you. And good luck. Okay. More uh, questions? Last vraag. Yes, dichtbij, gelukkig. Hi, oh, English. Hi, my name is Niels. Uh, I'm in my first years of uh, business administration. And um, you said you studied and then you start up your business. Uh, but how did you manage your time while starting up a business and studying? Yeah, I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really, um, I wanted to get all, uh, all my studies done and the startup done. But the, yeah, it's one of the most difficult things there is. All the lectures that I had, I was just opening up my laptop and then doing my email, sharing products on United Wardrobe. And, yeah, I'm getting a six. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like, w when I started United Wardrobe, I already was like, okay, we have to make this work. It doesn't matter what the cost, if I'm gonna drop out of college or not. And eventually I did four years and I still finished my bachelor because the Wageningen University really was super um, coolant. <laughs> they were super chill. Uh, and if you go to a university or some mentor and you're gonna tell them, hey, I'm doing my business and it's super hard for me to get my studies done, they always can say, okay, maybe you have to do only one course this semester or you have to talk to a lot of people. Thank you. I also uh, believe that there are different uh, programs for students that want to become an entrepreneur, just like there are 
uh, for sport uh, students as well. Like in uh, Heerenveen, you have all these top sport uh, programs and that help you through your college, universities uh, faster, better. It's a different approach if you want to really become an entrepreneur. There are some programs available. I'm looking at the... Uh, sorry, one more? Okay. The very last. Hey, hey. Hello, uh, my name, name is uh, Niels Reinders and uh, I have also a startup, Apply Students. Uh, we connect uh, students to companies. Uh, I found it really interesting uh, when you talked about that you bought a, a Facebook group. Yeah. Um, do you have more of those uh, growth hacking uh, tips that worked for you? Yeah, it was uh, influencer marketing, but when we were doing influencer marketing, we already were on a stage that we can pay the influencer, so it was not really growth marketing, it was just marketing. Um, but you just have to find out where the early adapters are. And for every startup, it's different. You know, if you're going to sell frikandellen, you're going to be at the football bar, or the cantine, and all the people there want to eat frikandellen, but then you go to a vegan show, nobody wants your frikandellen. Yeah, <laughs> it's you have to just find the early adapters um, and try everything that you can try and give everything that you try your attention, but as soon as you validate it and it's not going to work, hop over to another thing. And it can be Google AdWords, it can be Facebook marketing, Snapchat marketing, TikTok marketing, Instagram marketing. You have a hundred different email marketing. All those kinds of things are possible. But you just have to find it out and pivot. Yes, answer your question. First off, give a big applause to Thais. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Blijf maar even staan. Oké. Okay. Uh, I don't have a quick translation right now. Uh, can I have a last slide, sheet, click, whatever? Yes. Oké, okay, uh, we wrap it up, because uh, everybody has to go. But first off, uh, there are some other activities. One is the fuck up night. It's the first one, all uh, organized by founded team over there. And we see launch game, I believe, and the business ID gen. Very rapidly, launch game is when you um, Build a startup, the two years go in two hours with beer and pizzas, and you're going to start uh, on a game-wise, I don't know if that's an English word, but fuck it, uh, start how to start a business. And the last one, the ID generator, is how to come up with a business idea or how to upgrade the business idea. If you want to go there, follow the pages, Insta mostly, or go to Jorn't, Jorn still the farmer over there. And if you want to have uh, like an office and hustle with people over here, there's of course Center for Entrepreneurship. Did you all enjoy? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Bravis. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. Good luck and see you soon. Yeah. Thanks. 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, have a great trip and I hope you all are super inspired and become entrepreneurs and don't be afraid to do stuff. Don't research too much, just go on. If you want to do something in crypto, for example, just buy for a euro on Bitcoin, see how that works and try to develop something on the blockchain and try and do and don't research too much and don't think too much. Just go and find out and validate. Yes, thank you. Have a good luck, guys. Woo.